Daniel, awesome job in the tournament. Uh, it's kind of, it was kind of refreshing because we had, I think we had almost 25 pounds and you had 29 something, right? So 29, I think. Yeah, so we weren't even close to the win, so that made it nice. But on the Lake Pleasant tournament, uh, I wasn't sure how my leg was doing. We did the Bass Pro Shops uh, Spring Classic, and it was really hurting. So I told I told my partner Lon Armel that I didn't think I was going to be in shape to do it. And uh, I saw the weather coming in, the the rain, the wind, the clouds, and I really thought that it would screw up those bed fishermen like Daniel. Who thought I, I was a bed fisher, only one. <laughs> Anti, <laughs> but uh, I thought it would work in my favor because. And Daniel has a story about that too, but, but the Lucas Oil Open, I don't know if that was 2013 or 14 and when that was, we won that Lucas Oil Open, the weather came in, those bed fishermen couldn't see their beds, and uh, we just went out and drug a drop shot and uh, you know won that tournament, won a boat, and um, really cool tournament. But So that's why I told Juan, we had no practice, and uh, basically I just, I just fished a drop shot, 25 to 30 foot, deep, slow, and uh, just, just uh, I have areas in my lake, you know, steeper areas that, that have quick access to deep water and stuff that I like. And I was just throwing a drop shot. Six pound line, very important. Lon was throwing eight pound line. It took me three fish, uh, unanswered fish, till he switched. Because he said it won't make a difference, and it, it, it does. Your, your, your bait has better action. And just one tip I can give you guys, and you know, nobody wants to hear about drop shot. You hear enough about it. But, because <laughs> he gets hate emails on a show about all the drop shot shows he does. It is true because uh, drop shots. Like a on the hey, it's not drop shots. Drop shots tough, man. It, it, it's a. Uh, it, it's it's a like skill. it's like watching paint dry. It's not fun. I'd rather be throwing a buzz bait. It, it, it's just it, it, it's tough. But you know what? If you if, if you fish it slow, and man, I fish with these high school kids. You know, good fishermen that are kids, and they just shake it, shake it, shake it, and work it, and shake it, and always tight. Slack line. Somebody once told me, and I don't know who it was. I wish I could hug him and kiss him because I made a lot of money on the drop shot and uh, took third place out of 143 boats on the drop shot. When I'm pulling that bait, I dead stick it, hold the line tight, let that worm suspend, drop my rod tip, and I envision that worm sinking down to the bottom. And I tell everybody. Why does the Senko work? Does it look like a shad? Does it look like a crawdad? It looks like a stick. Why does it work? It's because of that fall. So I have a little bit longer leader. Gary talks about running four inch leaders in the winter. I have a long leader. I, I use a 12, 14 inch leader. And I'm fishing that worm suspended and I dead stick it. And I lower my rod tip and I envision that worm sinking down and laying on the bottom. And so many times I pick back up, there's a fish. And that's all I did in Pleasant. And I, and I really feel like I catch a fish, a lot of people fish right by because I fish it slow, but I have areas I have confidence in for sure, but I fish it slow, I know they're there, and I fish it on slack line. People don't give that drop shot slack line. So, not talking about the drop shot, but we caught all our fish, every single one of them in the drop shot, we had no practice, I fished slow, and uh, yeah, I ended up third place with, with 25 pounds for two days, super happy with it, we got a great trophy, and uh, super cool to see Daniel and the Nitro team. Took my money, my nitro money that I've been getting for so long. <laughs> he, uh, he got that and I'm happy for him and I'm happy for Ty, he's an awesome guy. Um, what else? Real quick, just went to Havasu. Uh, had another good tournament, finally. I've had, been a little slump. Six, you know, it's been six months. I, I mean, it's, it's been a little rough for me. And uh, same thing, every single fish I caught was on a drop shot in Habitat. And the wind was blowing 30 miles an hour, hold onto my hat. Trolling motor on high, waves coming over the boat, dragging the drop shot behind the boat where I can feel the bottom. Um, a lot of guys don't fish that way. And I'll be dragging it, I'll be dragging the boat, holding the, dragging behind the boat. I'll drop straight down and just get the boat in the perfect position. And I'll get that boat movement where, where I can feel those rocks and I'm moving the right speed. And I just put the trolling motor on high and the waves were coming over at our, our feet and I, I was catching them. We caught some really nice fish that day. Lon still wants to try to cast forward and, and, and work in the wind. It's really hard in the wind. I just can't feel the bait when I'm working or trying to drag it when you cast. When that wind's blowing, I just get, get underneath the boat and drag it. And I, I started in the 80s, you know, with Floyd Prees. And I bet you there's a couple people that probably heard that name before. But he taught me how to split shot. And that's how I split shot. It's a lightweight Carolina rig, basically. But 
I drop shot the same way and it really paid off to have a suit, which I've got a second place there. The Canadians. So Canadians beat us and they're throwing hair jigs and uh, uh, somebody called them the Canadian KVD is what they said because these guys are really good fishermen. They've been beating, beating those Havasu locals up there, Justin Kerr and Roy Hawk. And, uh, <coughs> but uh, had some real good tournaments. I'm really happy. We filmed a show today. We came straight from the lake. <laughs> and uh, I want to thank uh, Darren Perkins. Wait, wait. Raise your hand back there, Darren. Wave. He's the, uh, he's a, He's the cameraman, he does all the editing, and uh, we have a second cameraman today for the head-to-head. -head. We got a head-to-head -head show done today, and uh, all I gotta say was the best fishing that I've had. I can't remember a better day myself, so I don't wanna say too much because I don't know what the rules are, but I wanna thank Derek Perkins for uh, you know, having me a part of the show. He, he makes us look good. I've, I've gone home from shows where I called Johnny and said, oh, they're biting a candy, get, get your butt down here. And uh, Johnny comes up at like noon, I'm going, oh no, and Darren's in the back holding the camera and weighs 30 pounds, I'm going, <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> like, man, they bit yesterday, I don't know what's going on. So, so these guys, uh, these guys are, 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 are awesome friends, have a great time with them, and I just want to give Darren credit, because he's the one that's uh, the mastermind behind taking, I don't know how many hours of footage and putting it into, into an entertaining show, and he does it, you know, that, that Candy Lake show we did was, was, was horrendous and uh, he uh, he figured it out. I, I, I was dreading watching the show and I watched it and I said it's awesome. So I'm not talking. I want to bring up my good friend Johnny Johnson. All right. And let me just say something real quick while you're getting your stuff coming up here. I've sat in the back of this I've sat in the back of this guy's boat and watched him bed fish and he won't let you fish anywhere near him. You know I gotta sit, <laughs> sit I gotta sit in the back of the boat and you know I'm not allowed up there where he's doing his magic. But let me tell you something. One quick story, Lake Mead, ABA Championship. These guys were working a fish for an hour. They were working the bank and fishing. He goes, and they just gave up and left. And Johnny, Johnny says, well, let's go see what they're looking at. Really, they spent an hour on it, dude. You think they're gonna, you think it's gonna bite? I'm like, whatever. So we, I go over there and he gets on the trolling motor and looks at it. He goes, oh, that's a two pound smallie. I'm like, yeah, they just spent an hour on it. It's not gonna bite. Five minutes later, get the net. This guy, you know, I've seen him. He's he's the, one of the best there is this time of year for sure. And uh, I want to bring Johnny Johnson up here. But before I do, I want to thank Jerry, Mike, Daniel, everybody, Gary, everybody talking. Good job, uh, guys. Sure appreciate it. Thanks everybody for coming. Thank you.